Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Weird Science Comics YouTube channel, where I'm going to be going through Strange Adventures number two, an issue that's written by Tom King with art by Mitch Gerards and Evan Doc Shaner. And this is a book that's going to bring up a lot of comparisons to Mitch Gerards and Tom King's Mr. Miracle. And I think that if you went through Mr. Miracle and you loved it the whole way, you thought that it nailed the ending. I do think that you're going to be more into this Strange Adventures. I think this is a book that is straight up for Tom King fans. If you thought that Mr. Miracle didn't really tie up all the loose knots and you were getting bored or whatnot, I think that you're going to feel the same with this as well. I don't think this is going to change anybody's mind of, I don't like Tom King, but now I do, or I did like Tom King and now I don't. Now, for me personally, it is a very tough issue. This is what I said with Mr. Miracle. It's a very tough thing to rate each issue because it is a long form story. Now, again, one of my problems with Tom King is that I think that by the end of a long series like a 12 issue maxi series, I think that he forgets some of the things. I think that he doesn't tie up all the loose knots. And with that, I have had arguments since we started our podcast and site about Tom King's writing. If you are willing to fill in the blanks for him, if you're willing to kind of let something slide by the end, if you're willing to figure out things for yourself, then I think that you'll be more into this. And Mr. Miracle, like I said, if you like Mr. Miracle, jump in here. You'll love it. But you end up having this issue more about Michael Holt. Now, not the snooker player. We're talking about Mr. Terrific, who we saw last issue was pretty much edged on by Batman to look into this whole murder mystery of Adam Strange. You ended up having a guy who criticized Adam Strange, saying that the stuff that he did on Ron was more genocide than heroic. You know, it, it seems to go a lot with this whole cancel culture. Also, what is a superhero and what isn't? There's a lot of themes that seem to be swirling around with this. But Mr. Terrific, who is Mr. Fair Play, he is on the case. Now, you end up having this issue. If you don't know who Michael Hope, Mr. Terrific is, you're not going to necessarily get a essay on here is Michael Holt. He did this. He did that. Tom King gives you some important things, but he's going to do it in a subtle way. He's going to do it in a like a natural way. If you met him where you do end up seeing him throughout. And this, again, it tends to be something that Tom King does. He likes to repeat things. He likes to get a theme or a joke. And they will be repeated. If you don't mind that, again, you'll be happy. If this is something where you were sick of the kite man, hell yeah, very quickly, this is going to kind of get on your nerves as well. And it did by the end got on my nerves because what he is showing you is that Mr. Terrific is a man of fact. He is a man that knows a lot. He is a man who is going to be going to this whole case looking at the facts. He's a man of facts. And how he shows us is the T-spheres just keep asking him facts and he ends up answering them and you end up with correct, correct. Now, this is the thing. Maybe some of these aren't exactly correct. We'd have to see. And this is where you end up having this play with all of this is the idea of what's real, what isn't. That's what this whole story is based on. Adam Strange is on Earth and he's being accused of pretty much war crimes while he's on Ran, but we're seeing on Ron, he is the hero of Ron. So what's real? What isn't? All of these things swirling around. Well, you see this scene where it is Mr. Terrific going and buying Adam Strange's book. And I don't know why, but that reminds me of Fred. Fred is giving him the book, right? Uh, Fred. And, and so with that, and I, I'm thinking there, like, Fred, you, you got to... Uh, but this shows that this takes place before the end of last issue, because at the end of last issue, you had Mr. Terrific go and introduce himself to Alana and Adam. Now, we'll get back to this ending when we end this whole deal, because there's something going on here. But yeah, so Mr. Terrific is going to end up reading the book, figuring things out. We do go to the Evan Doc Shaner stuff 
on Ron with Alana, the super heroic stuff that looks great. And Mitch Gerard's stuff looks great as well. And it is a cool kind of juxtaposition of the gritty real life stuff on Earth compared to the, you know, pretty much golden age stuff, super heroics on Ron. But when you go to the Ron stuff, the basic premise is to show you here that Alana and Adam are in love, that they will do anything for each other to save each other. And they are, you know, they, they love Ron, the planet. We're pretty much seeing the idyllic, maybe fantasy of Adam Strange and Alana on Ron. Going back to Earth, though, the gritty stuff. And like I said, I, I love Mitch Gerard's art. You get more as he's reading the book. He's being asked more facts. He's a man of facts. It's really going to be pounded in. There you go. You go. And this is the jumping back and forth that I really think is interesting visually in this book. It really is. When you go from ultra gritty to, you know, golden age, clean, cartoony stuff, it really does go like, oh, man, you know, there's the real stuff. And is this real? Because the Ron stuff, it just seems more like the comic booky sort of thing that it's what an Adam Strange would want you to think. So you end up while all this is going on again, you're going to learn a bit of Michael Holt as it goes on. But you also see that he's asking around, hey, what do you think of that Adam Strange? Do you think he's a good guy? Oh, yeah. You know, I think he's pretty good. I don't know. And with that, if you remember, the first issue was this big murder, a guy who was in line to get the book signed by Adam Strange. You did the genocide. You did that. He ends up dead. Everybody thinks that it would be Adam. We're not going to get anything of that in this issue. So we're more of a slow burn. Let's learn about Mr. Terrific. Let's see that Mr. Terrific is a fact guy. Let's see more of the, I said, idyllic visions and versions of Alana and Adam Strange on Ron. I think that by the end, we will end up getting them mixed together. You'll end up having a thing that, you know, shows that it's not all what we saw and it's not all bad, not good. We, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, you just keep doing this. And again, uh, Doc Shaner's art is, is incredible. I love his art on anything. Now, you end up then while you have Michael Holt looking more into this as he's reading Adam Strange's book. He thinks that Batman has set him up a bit. He thinks that he has set him up in a way of, you know, why did you pick me? What's going on? And and he says at this point, he saved Ron, probably saved our world, too. He's like you. He's a superhero. And then Batman's, aren't you a superhero? So there's these things going back. Now, you end up seeing the, uh, Professor Pig in the background as they're fighting. But it goes more where Michael Holt, and this to me is one of the big parts of this issue where he does say to Batman, you know, I think that you're setting me up here because my wife died and Adam Strange's daughter died. I think that's why I think you're a manipulative beep, Bruce Wayne. Now, you shouldn't say Bruce Wayne at any time, even over the comms, but that's fine. And the funny thing is, again, Mitch Gerard's art, and it it does end up throwing me off here because when he is fighting Professor Pig, which looks great, it reminds me of Batman number 62 that he jumped on with Tom King during... Uh, during the nightmares, you have stolen my Th- that's dreams. all I remember. That's all I can think of. I'm like, oh no, I, I don't need nightmares of the nightmares anymore. Please, I, I don't need that. Well, you go off, you see Adam. He's going to do everything for Lana's save. And again, there's not much to talk about here because of how quick this thing is, and just the themes that are really, really being pounded in here. Here is now Michael Holt shooting and answering more questions. This, though, is a kind of a thing where you do have Mr. Terrific kind of like, you know, why is Adam Strange the superhero that's on lunchboxes? Why is he loved by everyone where I'm here? I won gold medals. And this is all stuff for Mr. Terrific. I reinvent tech. Now, he does say I was winning the gold metals, not medals. So there's a little bit of a faux pas. But he ends up. You know, talking to the T-Spheres, which are, you know, his best buddies there, my buddy. And, yeah, why why am I the one? I'm doing so much here. And there's Adam Strange, you know, Mr. Hero, who's on the lunchboxes. I'm telling you, somebody has to tell Mr. Terrific here that Adam Strange, really not that popular, but I do love him. But you end up having this continue. Now, this is one of the other big moments where as 
as Mr. Terrific's reading the book, he realizes, wait a second, this is not all true. This is not fully true. His daughter did not die. His daughter isn't dead. He tells this to Batman, and you almost get the feeling of this, that Batman knows all this, that Batman probably does know everything, but because he's Batman, because of something else, he didn't want to get involved with this. Either he is setting Mr. Terrific up for a fall, which would be awful for Batman, but again, this is Black Label, it's Elseworlds, or he thinks that this is something that... If Mr. Terrific looks into, more people might believe, but also this might be a healing thing for Mr. Terrific as well. We'll have to see how that plays out. You go back to Ron and see that, again, Adam Strange will do anything. This is him. He is going to kill if it's if it's necessary. He's going to kill if somebody doesn't help him with his wife. So you're just setting up more of Adam Strange. You know, he is a hero, but, you know, he might step over the line sometimes. So we'll have to see how that is. But, yeah, by the end, you also find out a a very important thing about Mr. Terrific that will lead into something. I'm not going to spoil everything, but it's something to do with, you know, the, the version of if Adam Strange's daughter did die in something in the past that Mr. Terrific just finds out. But this is where it ends again. Now, it ends on the same thing that the first issue ended at. Same exact scene, but it's a little different. Here is where Mr. Terrific says, My name's Michael. I've read your book. I have a few questions. Very quick. You see Alana there watching. Anna. But the first time he says, I'm Michael. I'd like to get started right away. We don't. Why don't we sit down? I've read your book. I have a few questions. Now, This is what drives me nuts about Tom King. And we'll go back to this one, you know, how he says that. You see Alana, different deal, whatever. The thing that drives me nuts, and this happened in Mr. Miracle as well. There was a point when Barda's eyes changed color and you thought that was a clue, but it never ended up being anything. Here you have this change and I understand that a lot of times you'll see a scene and it'll be a little different, but in a story, in a series that is based so heavily on what is real and what isn't, is this a clue? Is this just a different way of saying it? Because I don't know, and this is what drives me nuts with some of these things. Is this more important than it should be, or is this just the idea? But from one issue to the next, you, you pretty much you should get that exactly right, especially, again, in a series that is supposed to show you or have a mystery based on lies, not lies, even the cover. Even the cover says lie, 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 lie. So y- you have to be careful with this. You-, you really do. You have to take more care if this is a mistake or whatnot. It drives me nuts, though. But overall, I-, I like the themes going on. I like it. But this issue pretty much is just, it, it feels like you're getting punched in the face with them again. And it, it just ends up pretty boring. In my mind, this is a very, very boring issue. The art is great, but having to really slug you with the themes, I think it was overdone. I think, and I didn't even put the one part is the Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, where if you were reading Tom King's Batman, at one point, Batman became the idea of let's tell other people's fairy tales, poems, things like that. And now we have it in this. This actually is a lot of stuff in here. That reminds me more of his Batman run than it actually does Mr. Miracle. And yeah, I liked his Batman run early and then I I got off it. But yeah, this whole deal to me overall, boring, but it's only one part of a 12 part machine. It's only one cog. So it's tough. And I, I really think that Tom King's stories like this, where people say he does better in the 12 issue mini or even the six or whatever it would be. I still think that with that being said, it is something that usually is better read and trade. Better re- wait till the end because you're just going to be confused. But if you're a fan, you'll get this. I understand. He has a lot of fans. I'm not one of them, but I'm trying to be fair. I'm being honest. I'm not going to end up screaming and yelling and throwing things around just to get some clicks in the views. That's not what I do. I know that by the end, I probably won't end up succeeding as much as others that do that. But this is just not a review. And my honest score is a 6 out of 10. And that is that. And thank you for listening to this. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and like it. And then look below at all of those weird science links. 
podcast for DC and Marvel Comics, a Marvel Comics and DC website. And we have a Patreon where you can go and support us. Just go and check everything out. And I'll talk to you later.